reportage on war that almost resembles war propaganda has real-life consequences. A 71-year-old Illinois man stabbed a six-year-old Muslim boy to death. The shocking, harrowing attack in which the boy's mother was also grievously wounded took place on the 14th of October. Charged with hate crimes, the assailant, who also happens to be the family's landlord, reportedly targeted the Palestinian-American family for their Islamic faith and as a response to the war that at this moment is unfolding between Israel and Hamas after watching reports about this war on television. The question that needs to be asked is this. How responsible has the media coverage of this war been? And what is their liability for hate crimes such as this that are being committed after people watching a reportage of the war on their television and social media? Our next report gets you more details. Plainfield Township, about 40 miles southwest of Chicago, transformed into a scene of horrific murder last Saturday morning. Wadia Al Fayumi, a Palestinian American boy who celebrated his sixth birthday barely weeks ago, was stabbed 26 times with a military style knife with a 7 inch serrated blade. Wadia's mother, 32 year old Hanan Shanin, who came to the United States 12 years ago, endured multiple stab wounds in the attack. Expected to survive the attack, she couldn't attend her son's funeral as she is still recovering in hospital. The deceased boy and his mother had been living in two rented rooms in a house owned by the attacker, 71-year-old Joseph Zuba. There were no signs of anything wrong between the perpetrator and the victims. Zuba had been friendly to the whole family, but especially to the kid. The boy who he ended up killing had been like a grandson to him, a fact illustrated by gifts and toys that Zuba bestowed upon the kid. Zuba had even come for the boy's sixth birthday a few weeks ago. So what brought about this transformation and rage that ended up in the murder of the beloved kid? Reportedly, Zuba had been listening to the conservative talk radio since the Israel-Hamas conflict broke out. Increasingly paranoid about the presence of Palestinian Americans in his house, he was angry at the boy's mother for what was happening in Jerusalem. Finally, on the fateful morning, he attacked the boy's mother, attempting to choke her, saying, you Muslims must die. To what extent was this person radicalized and brainwashed by this lopsided, one-sided atmosphere that has fanned the flames of hatred against Muslims and Palestinians? And just as the families of these Palestinian American citizens back in Gaza and in Palestine are suffering from what is now being called war crimes, blanket bombings, etc., and this boy and his family who sought refuge in the United States have now been stabbed. One is killed and one is in serious condition. We fear for her life. And I was talking to the father and he mentioned that, you know, part of the reason we came here is to escape the subtler violence in which situations like this could occur with impunity. Zuba has been charged with first-degree murder, attempted first-degree murder, aggravated battery with a deadly weapon, and two counts of hate crime. The horrific, unprecedented incident has shocked the local community, now engulfed with a sense of paranoia and insecurity. It's heartbreaking. And again, it's because it's in this community. He had nothing to do with it. All because he was an innocent child. He was Muslim, that's what happened. He was Muslim and this is what they did. This is what this monster did. It hits home, you don't feel safe now. I live in Plainfield for over 20 years. You don't feel safe. I don't feel safe. I, someone on Facebook, literally, I was going after me right now, calling me a terrorist. So who's to blame for such a senseless, hateful, horrible act? Is it only the perpetrator of the crime or the wave of disinformation and toxicity we are enveloped with, inflaming passions and thereby escalating the conflict in an electronic fog of war? Close to 4,500 lives have been lost in the Israel-Hamas conflict so far. Introspection, a little empathy and restraint might save loss of many more.